You ready? All right. All right, and we're back with Rolex rankings number four, Brooke Henderson. Brooke is competing in her sixth KPMG Women's PGA Championship, has never missed a cut, and won in a playoff in 2016, making her seventh start of the 2020 LPGA Tour season with three top ten finishes. Brooke, I know you're usually someone who likes to get out and play every week, play week in, week out. It's a different year, certainly, understandably, picking and choosing and taking your time. But how are you feeling right now as, as we get ready for, for the season's next major? Uh, yeah, you know, the last few weeks have been really good to me, and that's been really exciting, you know, to see that I'm back in contention, um, you know, in, near the near or in the final groups on the weekend is always a lot of fun and to play as well as I did at a and um, and then you know back it up last week at ShopRite. Um, my game feels like it's in a really good spot so I'm really excited going into this week especially you know when I have such a great history here at this event and this golf course just looks amazing so I'm excited. You actually took me right into my next question. It's like you read my question here. <laughs> uh, your win at Sahali was undoubtedly one of the, the biggest moments of your career. Everyone will, will say getting that, that major win. Um, do, you, do you ever just think back to that week and smile <laughs> about the week in Sahali? Um, yeah, I think that was just such a life-changing um, event and just everything seemed to go so perfectly. Um, it was just a great week from the whole one on Thursday to hoisting the trophy on Sunday um, and to have Britt by my side for it. It just was a remarkable week, and you know this tournament, KPMG and the PJ have just—they've been a huge part of my career so far. Um, getting the sponsors invite in 2015, and then you know playing—I guess I finished second in 2017. So this tournament's just been um, huge in my career. What is it about this this tournament in particular that really seems to to bring out the best in you? Is it the experience itself? Is it the golf courses? What is it? Um, I think it's just everything. You know, they always treat you so well. We're on like the best golf courses in America. Um, the purse is always really big, which is always a bonus. And you're just taken care of. You know, the food's always great. Hospitality is always awesome. And I think um, they're just like raising the bar for women's golf, which is really exciting. And playing on network television, it's it's really great. And um, I think. You know, a few days ago I walked and I saw the trophy and I looked for my name <laughs> engraved on the side and that was just a really cool moment for me. And I know you even have like a special part, part in, the, yes. in, the, in the locker room. Did you ever think you'd be sharing a locker room with, with Dame Laura Davies? I mean, really, it's mind blowing. <laughs> yeah, it is, absolutely. Um, and I played really early this morning at seven and she was teeing off too, so um, it's just, yeah, it's amazing to be able to play against the best in the world. and to be surrounded and have my name on trophy that have so many great names um, that have played before me. Great. We'll open it up for questions. Reminder, everyone on Zoom, please raise your hands. I believe we might have a question here in the room. We'll start over here with Zephyr. Yeah, with so many pros finding success these days with unconventional swings, what advice would you give to up and coming players who are trying to win with unique swings? Um, yeah, you know, I've been really fortunate. I have pretty much the same swing as I did when I was like three years old. Um, and my dad's my coach and he never really changed too much because um, it seemed to be working. And so he just kind of let me go with it and just refine some of the smaller things. So I think it's just really important that if it's working, just keep going, keep practicing, keep working hard. All right, we're going to go further on down. Hey, Brooke, you're already a pretty powerful player, but when you see what somebody like Bryson's doing out on the PGA Tour, have you worked to try and even get more power or do anything to get more distance uh, in your game? Um, yeah, you know, um, my team and I, we always consider length being a big advantage. And so, you know, every year I'm always trying to, you know, hit a little bit further, whether that's new equipment at ping or, you know, just getting a little bit stronger. Um, he definitely took it to, like, the ultimate um, and, like, ultimate uh, – I don't know, just like lifestyle change, and I'm not sure if I'll do that, but, you know, just like small gains here and there, and I think it will make a big difference. Thank you. Great. We're going to take it to Zoom. We're going to start here with John McCarthy. John, if you could uh, unmute your microphone, please. Hi, Brooke. Hi. As someone who usually plays a very heavy schedule, do you feel as prepared as usual for this major championship and do you have to do anything this week maybe differently than you do in the past to, to get ready? Um, yeah, the thing about um, when the golf course moves around every year, um, you have to really pay attention Monday through Wednesday um, to get prepared. You know, Britt 
is out walking the course, getting the numbers, making sure everything's correct, and you know, just seeing a golf course for the first time, we really just have to pay attention these first three days um, and try to get a solid strategy together. So we've been trying to do that. Um, as for, I've been playing now since I guess middle of August, um, so I feel like my game's in a good spot, especially coming off two top tens. So that feels nice, and hopefully I can just keep it going. One more. Now that you've become Canada's winningest pro golfer, men or women, do you look at these majors a little bit differently as sort of, um, you know, the real next step in, in your legacy? Um, I think, you know, winning my first major in 2016, um, now when I come to a major championship, I know that I can compete here and I, I know that I've done it before. So that gives me a lot of confidence um, going into the week. And, you know, I have a parking space out in the parking lot. And you mentioned a special spot in the locker room. So there's just a lot of perks to it. Um, but I feel like the biggest one is just confidence, knowing that you can compete on the biggest stage there is in, in women's golf. And um, hopefully, you know, I can get four solid rounds together and, you know, be in contention come Sunday. All right. Thank you so much, John. Apologies to you. Uh... Doug, I, I meant to uh, click you to allow you to talk, and I pressed the wrong button. So, Douglas Mado, we're going to go to you right now. Uh, hi there, Brooke. Hi. Hi. Um, you have a, a group of fans called Brooks Brigade. So when you play, there's usually a good number of fans cheering you on. So what's it like for you to play this year without spectators, and how do you think it's going to affect your play at the uh, majors? Um, yeah, you know, it's definitely very strange um, playing without fans. They definitely play a huge role um, in golf, and, and it's always fun, you know, to connect with the fans after a good round or, you know, hit a good shot and hear them clap. It's always really fun, and you can kind of feed off their energy, where this year that's missing, but at the same time I think it was the correct call um, under the circumstances and in a world pandemic. It's just definitely the right decision. Um, and I think, you know, over the last few weeks, I've kind of gotten more comfortable with it. I feel like the biggest challenge is when you hit a good shot, but you can't see the green. Normally, you can just depend on the crowd to know if it's a good shot or if it's over the back. Um, and now I just kind of have to depend on Brit, and we're walking really fast <laughs> up to the green to try to check it out. Great. Thank you so much, Douglas. Next, we're going to go to Adam Stanley. Adam, feel free to unmute your microphone. Awesome. Hey, Brooke. Hey. Um, just wondering about uh, momentum. I mean, obviously, we can see the results. Um, you know, runner-up at the ANA, T6 last week, and, of course, uh, just some excellent results at this particular major in your career. But do you feel mm -hmm. like you've got momentum coming into this week? Um, yeah, I think it's slowly building. I uh, didn't really get off to the start I wanted to um, in August, but I've kind of regained um, where I was and you know, to see my world ranking go up as well um, to number four is really exciting. And I just feel like, yeah, my game's in a good spot. I feel like I have great vibes from this tournament and the last few tournaments that I've played in. And, you know, I think just being here at Aronimink, it's just so beautiful and the course is in such amazing shape. It's definitely going to be a challenging week. Um, very difficult golf course, um, but hopefully, you know, I can hit it well and, you know, just put myself in contention. Amazing. Thanks. Good luck. Thanks, Adam. We're going to go right over here behind my shoulder to Jeff. Brooke, uh, Donald Ross is known for interesting green complexes. What's the challenge of trying to learn these greens in a couple of days? And as you look at the test overall, what do you think the biggest thing they'll be asked of you this week? Um, yeah. These greens are massive and very slopey. Um, and as you mentioned, you know, it's just really important these first three days to try to learn them as best as you can. Um, and luckily we do have a greens book and Brit's a good green reader, so I can depend on her. But um, yeah, I think, you know, just pace on putts. I, even, even if your ball striking is decent, you're, you know you're gonna have long putts at some point uh, during this tournament. And just trying to read them this, the best you can. Bethann? Yeah, how, how much is length a factor here, I think? Of course, it's playing very long. Um, I've hit more hybrids <laughs> in the last two days than I have in a really long time. Um, so I think, you know, it just kind of depends on the wind. Um, and, you know, hopefully they'll move us up a little bit on some holes uh, just because it is so soft out there. Um, but I feel like if you can hit it long and hit it straight, then you'll have some good looks. Um, especially on the shorter holes.
What do you think is going to be a good score? Mm, that's a tough question. Um, <laughs> I mean, it is a very difficult golf course. I feel like if everything's on, then you can make some birdies. But I think I don't think the scores are going to be super outstanding. But you know, hopefully, you just hit a lot of fairways and a lot of greens and see what happens. Do we have anything further? Well, Jeff, go I'm ahead. Just going to ask you about the. You have a lot of good young players out here on this tour, and there's a great tussle, I guess, chasing that number one spot. What's it like to be in that mix, and how big a role does that play in, in what you're trying to accomplish? Uh, yeah, you know, I've been really happy that my ranking has been inside the top ten, basically, um, I guess, since 2016, mm. um, which is really exciting. And as you mentioned, there's a lot of talented golfers out here, and it has been s sort of some movement um, recently up near the top, and people battling it out. And I'm sure over the next year or two, there will be some more movement. So it's just an exciting time to be a part of this and to be in the position that I am. And hopefully I can just continue to improve and get a little better and um, you know, hopefully add a few more wins to my resume and then maybe my ranking will move up. All right, well, one last question um, about KPMG. You're a, a KPMG champion. This certainly is an, 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 an important event in your history. Uh, one of the, the taglines here is inspire greatness. I know you, you talk about how much inspiration you take from your sister and your family, um, but who are some other athletes or some other people who have inspired you? And what does it mean to you when you see kids out there who are looking up to you as their inspiration? Yeah, that's really cool. Um, as someone mentioned earlier, the Brooks Brigade, and it's really cool to think that I might be motivating them in some way, and hopefully that continues. I would say um, growing up, Morgan Pressel was huge inspiration to me, huge role model, um, and it's pretty cool now that we're friends out here on tour. So um, I feel like, yeah, I owe her a lot, and as you mentioned, my sister, my parents. Um, I'm just grateful to be out here. Well, we're grateful to have you. Have a great week. <laughs> Thank you.